and welcome back to Stanley Boy Reviews. I'm your host, Stanley. Thank you so much for taking the time to check out my channel and to talk about your favorite horror films. And <coughs> we are coming up on one of my two favorite days of the entire year. Yes, Halloween is right around the corner. So I thought I would take this video to talk about some of the movies that I have on rotation during this time of year. Now, of course, there are a zillion Halloween themed horror movies. So I narrowed it down to just five. And while I am sure that you have probably seen the ones that are on my list, maybe you haven't. And maybe my little list will inspire you to do some deep diving or perhaps show some appreciation to a movie you never really have in the past. So go grab your masks and of course grab your dangerous Halloween lights that I'm never going to remove from my body during these videos from this point forward. <laughs> Have a seat. My ass is permanently glued to this one. And let's get spooky, baby. Oh, and also, while we're here in this first minute of this video, let me take this opportunity to let you know that I am currently an active participant in a contest called The Face of Horror. I've made it to the top 12, where I am currently and comfortably bouncing back and forth between first and third place. Voting for this particular round ends on October 27th at 8 p.m. And I would greatly appreciate it if you guys would take this time to vote for me. There are occasions where one vote equals two votes and I will post that on my social media when that time happens. You could buy votes if you want to, you definitely don't have to. Free votes are efficient, sufficient, whatever the efficient word is, enough. Your free vote matters. If I win, I get $13,000. I get a spread in Rue Morgue magazine. I get to do a photo shoot with Kane Hodder, who played Jason in four out of the million Friday the 13th movies. I get to visit Buffalo Bill's house from Silence of the Lambs. There's a whole bunch of stuff that happens for me if I win this contest. And it would be great for my channel. So yeah, the link is right here. Please, please, please vote. I'll also attach the link at the end of this video. I'll also make a little separate video for future reference. I love you for this. Thank you so much. Anyway, let's do it. <laughs> In no particular order, we are going to start with the Halloween that almost wasn't, otherwise known as The Night Dracula Saved the World. A lot of you might remember this from your childhoods or some of you might not even know what I'm talking about. And if you've never seen it, I implore you to watch this. It's on YouTube. You can watch it for free and it's like 30 minutes long. So what more do you want? It was released on October 28th, 1979 and it even won an Emmy. And it's about a group of ghouls, including but not limited to Frankenstein's monster, the Wolfman, and the mummy who must band together to save Halloween from dissolution when Halloween's main witch threatens to not ride her broomstick across the moon. Why might you ask? <laughs> Well, she's tired of coming second to Dracula, who is the boss of the ghouls. Why should you be the leader of the monster world and not me? And she's tired of being disrespected. I'm tired of getting less respect than you. And she's tired of feeling ugly. I'm tired of all those ugly girl jokes. <laughs> Granted, this was made for kids, but it's still a terrific Halloween staple and makes me feel nostalgic and giddy every time I watch it. And I do watch it every single year. I just watched it yesterday. And there's even a disco number at the very end that is a really fun treat for the eyes. <laughs> And it also pairs well with The Worst Witch, starring Feruza Balk and Tim Curry, which is not on this particular top five list, but is something that you should also watch if you haven't seen it, or if you want something to watch as well during the holiday season. It will take you back to that childlike state when Halloween was something else entirely. Speaking of Dracula, next on the list is 1922's Nosferatu, the only version of Dracula to straight up frighten me to this day. And the kicker, it's a silent film. Nosferatu was basically a pirated version of Bram Stoker's Dracula. So much that the Bram Stoker estate sued and won and had all existing copies of this particular film destroyed, except one. And that is the one version that we all have today. Thank God. And this was 100 years ago this year. There are so many elements about this movie that are absolutely horrifying that I don't know where to begin, but I will give you at least one. And that is Max Schreck who plays the title character of Nosferatu, or Count Orlok, or Dracula. He is downright grisly. If you want to see someone capture the character of a vampire, look no further. 
Also, there's something really beautiful and bizarre and eerie about the silent movie. The big eyes, the flavored tones, the choppy quick frames. To me, this film just screams Halloween and is a perfect watch next to a dimly lit jack-o'-lantern. It's perfection in every sense of the word and I really can't recommend it enough. <laughs> Now I know most people have 1978's John Carpenter classic Halloween on their list every year for the Halloween season. And I can't blame them, I do too. But call me crazy, I actually prefer 1995's Halloween 6, The Curse of Michael Myers over 1978's Halloween during spooky season. Because, and I'm ready for the hate mail, it's one of my absolute favorites in the series. That doesn't mean that I like it more than Halloween part one, but I just like it so much. I don't know if it's because it was the first one that I ever saw or because there's like 10 versions of it that exist and every one is so different than the other. I mean, there's a producer's cut, there's an unrated cut, there's a theatrical cut, but I just think part six is so fun. It's creepy, it's underrated, it's weird, it's effective. And it's also the last time we see Donald Pleasance in the series. And personally, for me, it's Michael Myers at his most brutal and scary. I'm not even gonna bother going into a plot description or explanation because at the end of the day, it doesn't really make any sense. I think Halloween 6 is the tits. Just watch it, that's all. Next, we have 2007's anthology masterpiece, Trick or Treat, directed by Michael Doherty, starring a slew of people that you would recognize, more notably Academy Award winner Anna Paquin from True Blood. I'm not normally big on all of these anthology movies, but Trick or Treat definitely takes the cake. It works on a number of levels from beginning to end and tells a cohesive story that wraps up so nicely. Whoo! It's got werewolves. <laughs> Murderers. <laughs> Killer fathers. Daddy! It's got everything you could want in a horror film wound so tightly together. And it's also one of the few films that captures the spirit and essence of Halloween so perfectly and in an iconic and authentic fashion. The production design is so sleek. The script is amazing. The soundtrack is superb. And the performances are just on point. Everything about this movie is an A plus five stab film. Again, this is something that doesn't really warrant description because it's just one of those movies you have to watch. There's like four or five different stories that are happening. Once they intertwine together at the end, it all makes sense. Have a good time with it. Enjoy it. Trick or Treat is a top notch holiday film. I hate Halloween. And of course, last but not least, no Halloween movie list would be complete without a trip to Salem with the Sanderson sisters. Hocus Pocus is a movie that I start watching every July, which is when it was released, and I keep on heavy rotation until November 1st. It's rare for me to meet someone who has never seen it, although those people do exist. But if you are one of them, let me know. I will drop you my Disney Plus information and you can watch it today. Everyone knows Hocus Pocus is about a trio of witches who were executed in the late 1600s and are resurrected 300 years later to hunt and and eat all the children of Salem so they can stay young and beautiful forever. Easy peasy plot and it's done so nicely and so beautifully and it's so much fun and it has campy, wonderful performances by Bette Midler and Sarah Jessica Parker and Kathy and Jimmy. It's just a really, really fun movie. It's not necessarily a horror film. It's just one of those Halloween movies that never get old. I'm a, I'm a there was a long-awaited sequel that came out recently that's nowhere near as good as the original, but it's still fun. So if you get the chance, watch that one too. Nothing compares to the beauty that is Hocus Pocus part one. <laughs> So that's it. That's my top five Halloween themed movies. Of course, there are many more, but these are the ones that I watch probably the most. Have you guys seen the ones that I have mentioned? If you have not, or if you have, let me know what you think in the comments. If you like them, if you don't like them, let me know. And you guys, I'm on social media. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, on Twitter, and on TikTok. Don't don't forget forget to subscribe! Subscribe! Hopefully this helps with some recommendations to watch before Halloween and on Halloween. I will be back next week with another review. Please, you guys, have a safe and happy spooky season. Until then, I'll see you next week. Bye. <laughs>